Okay, here are some of the tools required to uh, change the tensioners and timing chains on a 98 Jaguar XJR. Um, you need two uh, tensioner shims. Uh, these go on the tensioners that, that tension the long chains, the chains between the camshaft and the crankshaft on the car. And you put these shims in um, to actually apply more pressure to these, um, these tensioners here to push them stronger against the chain uh, before you tighten down your, your cam gear. You need two of these. This is a um, uh, tool that helps you tension uh, cam gear. Um, between the between the two cams on each bank, um, these two pins here uh, go into the, the cam gear and allow you to push put tension on the chain. This very small piece is used to um, lock the crankshaft in place at top dead center. Uh, it goes in the front of the motor um, behind the crankshaft pulley and drops down into a little uh, hole and will lock the crankshaft in place. I've read a lot about this job and it says you only need one of these tools. This is a uh, camshaft, um, uh, basically a tool to lock the camshafts in position um, so that there's there's no timing uh, there's no keyways for timing on this car so you actually have to lock the cams in place replace the chains and then tighten everything back up and hope that you have your timing correct this allows you to make sure your cams don't move on you I've read a lot about this job they say you only need one of these I couldn't figure out how you could do it with just one so I actually bought two um, I'll let you know at the end of this video if you really need two or not. Okay, I'm going to document uh, the new parts that you're going to need to uh, change the tensioners on a 98 Jaguar XJR. Uh, here's some of the gaskets you'll need. Before you begin this job, you'll have to go and see if your car has um, one side with an orange colored valve cover gasket. If um, if your car doesn't, it takes a different, basically, gasket package, but I believe all the other parts are the same. If you have an orange-colored gasket, you'll have these figure-eight style uh, spark plug um, socket gaskets. Uh, if you don't, you'll have just basically O's. They're, they won't be connected. Uh, this is the timing cup timing cover plate on the front of the engine the gasket I believe that's what that is and I also have gaskets for um, the crank uh, the crank where it goes through the timing cover I've got four chains uh, one one short chain that goes between each set of cams and then two long chains that go between one of those cams and the crankshaft. Alright, here's one tensioner. The, this goes on the, uh, the top of the motor um, that tensions the chain that connects two cams, the short chain. Uh, this is a third generation tensioner. I'm performing this job because the first generation tensioners were mostly plastic. If you see, this one's mostly metal. Uh, it has a little pin in it that you remove after you install it that allows it to expand. Uh, while I'm doing this job, I'm replacing the thermostat uh, and the water pump. The water pump. The water pump is actually very small for such a big engine. I was surprised. All right, which moves us on to uh, the long chain tensioners. For each long chain, you'll need a straight tensioner guide, which doesn't move, and you'll need a moving tensioner guide that will actually move kind of like this, 
actually it'll be more like that and it'll move like this on that chain you'll you have different tensioners you've got two of those type of tensioners and then you'll have two of these tensioners this is the tensioner that that basically pushes this into the into the chain I believe this is also a pin that prevents it from expanding. Not going to try it. Alright, I think that covers the parts required. Before you do anything, try to put uh, some tape or a drop cloth over your, uh, over your fender sills. You will nick them doing this job. Uh, before you begin, you want to disconnect your battery. Always disconnect the positive side first and then the ground. Uh, this is a video about halfway through the disassembly of my 98 uh, Jaguar XJR to do a tensioner job. Uh, one of the first things I took out was the air box, which used to be in this area. Um, first part you want to take out is this piece. That holds the filter. And this piece. This piece actually comes into two pieces. Just a second. Well, maybe it doesn't. Here's the bottom part of the air box. And the bottom part of the air box actually fits into this area here. It's This is rubber. Let's see. The, uh, there's usually a cover here. Um, if you twist this um, screw here uh, 90 degrees, it'll actually pull out. You don't unscrew it, you just turn it 90 degrees. Um, after you get your air box out, uh, the next step is probably to disconnect your mass sensor and remove your, um, there's a long tube that goes down here to the air box, remove that. Um, you can go ahead and remove your uh, coil pack covers on each side um, and I'd remove your supercharger belt. Now what you don't want to do is don't um, don't remove your accessory drive belt before you loosen the three bolts on the front of the water pump. Um, let's see, anything else? Oh, uh, drain your car's oil and then also drain, um, drain the radiator. Now the radiator doesn't really take that much fluid. It only takes about a gallon. Um, and the radiator uh, this is the driver's side of the car here. The radiator drain screw is on the driver's side. I've also taken off the uh, fan assembly on the car. Um, a lot of the wires that go to the fan assembly are held on by zip ties. Uh, remember to put those back on before you reassemble your car, otherwise your, your power wires leading to your fans will get caught up in your accessory belts. That's all for now. Okay, on the front of the engine, there used, there's this um, there's this piece. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. That goes between uh, the driver's side piece on the radiator and this connector here. Uh, I've taken both of those off.